Igbo presidency non-negotiable, Chief Nwobodo. That's coming from the Nation newspaper. Now, Chief Nwobodo is a former senator and, of course, a former governor of the old Anambra state, according to the Nation newspaper, of course. Now, this is a sentiment that has been very pervasive among the Igbo people in Nigeria in recent years. And, of course, it seems very justified in a particular way. I mean, the North and the West have all been there when it comes to the presidency and it's only the Igbo that have not been there since the time of this you know this uh democracy stuff we're talking about let's even forget about the military era and whatever happened in the 20th century now in the 21st century since the time we got democracy back that's what is happening and it's basically 20 years now so they are complaining that they too should be given a chance in 2023 i mean there's nothing any sort of side should be wanting at this period they are the only ones that still ha sort of has a claim to that position at this time of course i don't think any side is going to be giving like grounds to them that easily because i know people are egomaniacs and people fight for their own self-interest there are people that are already lining up for the position at this time so hopefully nothing gets crazy in the nation hopefully nothing gets crazy but again they really really have a point based on our system i mean our system when you talk about this federal character and all this crazy stuff we do in nigeria where we can't just focus on who is competent and who is not and all we just have to do is to focus on whether you are from this part or from that part and which part is necessary at this time or which part is supposed to go into power at this particular time. I mean, that's the situation we have in Nigeria, but hopefully we can get a way to fix it. But again, that's the best way to avert uh, a, a bad consequence. That's just the way it is because we don't want to go back to what happened in the civil war we don't want to disenfranchise a particular ethnic group for an extended period of time you don't even have to do that that is very very evil for you to disenfranchise any sort of ethnic groups and this i mean the Igbo people really really feel like they are being marginalized at this time like they really really feel that and actually one of the reasons why ipob that's independent people of biafra is getting stronger in recent years it's actually one of the reasons why god there are so many Igbo young men and women that feel very very disenfranchised now you can see that there are so many of them making money there's so many of them succeeding in lagos and some other parts of the country and all of those things like that that is very true but what they are going to tell you that is because i mean it is despite all the discrimination and despite all those things that they were able to do that that you should not imagine if they are not being discriminated against what do you think is going to happen so that's what they will try to tell you of course there are some truths to that but again there are some evidence or at least in a particular way to the uh, allegations that nigeria is marginalizing them which of course goes back to the civil war the nigerian civil war 67 to 70 that's in, <clears throat> in the last century so it is something very very serious in the civil war we all understand that the distrust of ethnic groups was actually one of the reasons why that came up like starting from the time that Aguin Eronsi came into power after the coup of 1966 and all of those things like that, the North has been very, very distrustful of the Igbo people since that time, especially when you consider the fact that there was barely anyone in the East that got killed in that particular coup. And the people in the North and the people in the West, I mean, the leaders there got killed. So it seemed a little bit pre-planned, almost like almost like the East was trying to take over and things like that. But of course, the war came and the war has gone. And of course, Guan said that there was going to be healing and all of those things like that. Despite all those things, they feel like they are not being fully integrated into the system. Despite all the atrocities that was com that were committed against them during the civil war, they feel like they are not being fully reintegrated into the system. So that's the issue and they have legitimate right to complain whether they're right or wrong they have the right and the freedom to complain about those things and especially at a time like this where the two other main tribes of course the two other bigger tribes have all had a taste of the government of the federal government so they feel like come on it is time for us to go there nobody should come along and mention good luck jonathan and all that he's he doesn't count really because his side is not exactly Igbo in the actual sense of the word even though we sometimes mistakenly classify him as Igbo, he really isn't and of course the position of Bayasa state is somewhat in the west southern west in a way not exactly in the southeast that way so now do all those things come together and sort of feed all this discontentment of the Igbos. 
So that's just the situation. And of course, we would really want to be in a nation where everything depends on competency. We would really like that situation if we just choose our president based on who is competent. We choose our president based on who is capable to win in the election. Let's say for a particular party now, like PDP now, PDP would just choose who is able to win in PDP. And it's not going to depend on tribe or non-tribe. But the problem is that we don't have tribal unity in Nigeria. There's so much distrust in Nigeria. Nigeria is basically just a geographical region with so many factions, so many tribes, so many ethnic groups that are vying for power. Every single ethnic group is vying to be the one in charge. That's the situation on ground. So in that kind of a situation, instead of waiting for competence, instead of waiting for principles and all those things, most tribes just decide to, you know what, heck with that, they just care to go for what, to be the one in power, or fight for their own tribe, or fight for their own tribe to be in charge also, so that's basically the thing, that's what the West has been doing, that's what the North has been doing in a particular way, and that's what the East is not doing, like okay, yes, everybody has had a taste of that, let us too have a taste of this thing. So that's the situation and it's very, very sad that in Nigeria all we care about is having a taste of power. Nobody really cares about service to the people. Nobody really cares. No matter what tribe you may belong to, every single one of them, all these politicians, none of them really cares about serving the people. They all care about being in power. That's basically what it is. Whether it's in the level of government, or I mean of the governors, the level of the presidency, whatever it is, even at the local government, it's basically the same sort of people. Very, very crazy egomaniacs. That's all what they are. We really hope Nigeria can change, but it's very, very difficult to do that, especially when the memories of the civil war is still very haunting at this time. Nobody wants to disenfranchise a particular, uh, or to make a particular tribe to feel disenfranchised to the extent where there might be another breakout of a civil war. Hardly do countries really survive civil wars. Very rarely do countries survive civil wars. I mean, consider the American Civil War. It nearly broke America apart. So that's just the situation. And we are one of those countries that are very, very lucky to remain united after a civil war, which is one of the reasons why we should make sure that the people who wanted to break away are re-enfranchised into the system. They are actually re connected with the system as deeply as possible. If not, that separatist mentality is going to remain there. They are going to feel like they are, they are not part of the system. That's basically what it is. So it's the same thing with the American Revolution. For a particular set of years, people in the South felt like they were being like discriminated against. So they felt like this thing, I mean, this reconstruction and everything we're trying to do is not working. So the same thing is what, what, is what the Biafrans or all the people in the East are feeling at this time. So I guess we just don't have a choice than to, for anything that is worth, allow the Igbo people to be in charge. For the presidency, again, we would really want a place where Nigeria would just choose the presidency based on competency, but that's the system we have already fallen into now, talking about this federal character and all that stuff. But that's the situation we are right now. We just need to make sure that Nigeria continues as long as possible. We don't want a thing that's going to disintegrate this nation. So I guess we just have to allow the Igbo people to get into power and hopefully all these separatist mentalities will be quelled by that, hopefully, hopefully, so that Nigeria can last a lot longer. Basically, what you do in a nation is to make sure your nation lasts longer, especially in a nation that is multi-ethnic like Nigeria, unlike some nations where you have exactly the same ethnic groups, like in Europe, you have, they are basically the same, like Germans are just Germans, like British people especially in england they are just english people in scotland they're just scottish you know so all those kind of things like that so we understand that but in multi-ethnic groups like nigeria it's very difficult to hold unity without a lot of warring factions and all of those things like that the same thing that you have in the united states with different races having issues with each other the blacks having issues with the whites the whites having issues with the jews all sort of things like that so that's the situation hopefully we are just going to find a way to reunite the nation like more intricately and more deep Deeply. So that's just what we need to do. And again, if the East are going to find a way to get back into power, I don't know which party they are going to use, APC or PDP, nobody really understands. Probably it's going to be PDP, but I guess the best thing for them is to have a party that is going to rise up and is going to challenge these two. I don't know if there's going to be any sort of third party, 
or even if there's going to be any sort of third party it's going to be like a conglomeration of different parties together just like the apc was before it's rose to the place of being able to challenge the pdp because pdp was basically the one in charge basically unchallenged for a long time and again all these people are the same people in apc people in pdp there's going to be a third party it's still going to be exactly the same sort of people so i don't even know what all these things really matter i don't even think it really matters to care about parties maybe we should just vote for people individually i don't know but again parties really help you to get recognition and to get a lot of funding and a lot of support and see i understand all those things but again we really hope everything goes on well for the next few years and after buhari we are going to get uh, a better president not just because the person is from Igbo land but the, the best thing that's really going to help the Igbos now is to even if they are going to be the one to I mean, give the presidents in the next period or in the next administration, they should choose somebody that is reliable. Not just choose somebody because it's from your side. Not just choose some of all those cronies and all those crazy people in power at this time. We are just there to grab power. Choose somebody that is what? That is principled. Somebody that is going to help the nation. Not somebody that is going to be there simply to give goods to the East. Because that's what the West and the North have been doing. Apart from, I guess, okay, I guess... Uh, I guess Obasanjo really didn't do that because he was more liberal even to the north than the west. So you should get somebody like that that's going to be very, very supported by a lot of people all around. And this is going to be like a way for the east to prove to the north and the west that they are no longer separatists and they are people to be trusted with power. Again, it's something that's very difficult for us to talk about because nobody wants to feel like they were wrong. Again, it is not good for the not especially the north again because it's basically the know when you talk about this enfranchisement of the east is basically the north when it comes to that so now it's not good for them to disenfranchise the east in any way but again this is going to be a chance for the east to win the trust of the remaining tribes in nigeria by ruling as a federal like again like they call it the federal character in nigeria so you rule with what with justice and you rule with fairness towards all the tribes don't act like buhari is acting focusing a whole lot more on the north so that's the way it is extend hands to the other tribes too to the other regions too so that you can be a lot more trusted by those who distrust you and nigeria will live longer may nigeria live longer and um Again, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And bye.